come back to the community. Because if we were to use Tech Square or we were to use Forest City, I would say you've fallen uh, far short of the mark. It, it's just, it's never really come um, to benefit the community in an appreciable way. And again, I use Forest City as a, a classic example of how there's open space that the community doesn't use. The uh, Wars was just before us less than a year ago made a strong commitment about how their building is going to be a benefit to the community. We've got to have this open space and they gave the open space off during um, said, I don't I, mean, I don't even remember anymore, but I'm appalled. I'm appalled that you that anyone would promise open space and then it's not accessible to the community. So for me, if open space is supposed to be part of this proposal, it's supposed to be a benefit to the community, then it needs to be a benefit to the community. One of the things that I'm just concerned about, we're getting ready to go for something that's going to have far-reaching um, effects on our community. And one of the things I just said earlier, it seems to me that MIT is going at about 50,000 50, square feet per year. And I'm just not convinced that your proposal, particularly when we talk about housing, is going to be that need. Uh, we've heard from community members, it's been said here, that the need of housing, the need of housing is about 1,000 to 5,000. Um, units of housing now, I don't think we come up with 5,000 units of housing, but I know that if you don't figure out a way to absorb the, the use of housing for your postgrads and graduate students, that they're still going to come into the private market. And, and they often do, they come to the private market because of prices, but they, the, the, the burden on MIT's growth through students comes back to the city, not only around the housing, but around the parking that we've talked only a little bit about, because if you're the parking that you develop for your students is paid for parking. The parking permit fee for the city of Cambridge is by the bank of the park, and that puts the burden on the city. So there needs to be some, some, I need for you to address that better. So I'm, I'm with my colleague, um, Mr. Kelly, on that, and I'm also um, in agreement with my colleague around historical preservation. I know my colleague agree on that, but um, I want to see the buildings preserved. And, and used in some way, uh, however you do that, but I don't want to see them demolished or uh, altered in such a way that they're historical significant. It's, it's, so again, I said insufficient planning, I believe the long-term growth. Um, is this variance, if, if, if this petition is voted, is it going to be sufficient useful to campus growth? Because I don't, we don't know what your 50-year plan is. You're asking us to vote for something that's going to have impact on our community, you know, far, far into the future. So, so that's, that's, our, that's the synopsis of where I am um, in terms of being able to support um, this petition. Uh, so I will yield the floor. I didn't, it's not so much questions as it's a, a list of concerns we might have. Uh, again, I didn't have the benefit, and I'm not going to ask you to repeat it. I can get it from um, EDU Community Development. Uh, about the job training and how that is linked. And one of the things that uh, I've heard from school leaders like Fred Fantini that I'm going to raise is the number of students that come from Cambridge to end up at MIT, which is... Uh, and so I have to say to you, so what's the commitment to, to the university, uh, to, to, to the com community when there, we have these huge deficits? So, MIT, who's clearly started out in the business of education, and now it's the business of it, <coughs> business, is, is, it's more of a business than about education. And how do we, the city of Cambridge, benefit from that? So at this point, we're ready to vote on this today, Mr. Chair. I have to be a big now. And I don't know if you can run fast enough and work hard enough to bring it to uh, the area the level of acceptability that I have. But again, one of the parking lot parking lots it might be, um, is a non-negotiable for me. It's clearly not, it's a non-negotiable. The drug training is a non-negotiable. And the community benefit piece, which I did write down, the council of my interviews can't spoke to this. I know in the initial petition, um, it was going to be a committee that has, was appointed by MIT. I think we moved from that, because that was absolutely a non-starter for me. Um, I think this comes back to us as a council, we have failed because we do not have community mitigation program. And so we have to then accept when someone offers us and, and hope that that's going to be 
um, sufficient for our community. So it reminds me that we need to get busy on developing that community mitigation slash community benefits plan. But that not being in place now, um, I would rather just see the financial part of this, the community benefit, go to the city under some sort of formal form, formula or format that's equal or similar to what we do on the CPA, that we have control, care does need control of, of the financial aspects of the community mitigation plan, number one. And number two is it'd be interesting for me to see how that money comes to the city. Does it come from one sum? Does it come over a period of time? Um, if it's over a period of time, I want to see it at the very, almost from the time we voted, we start to realize some of those benefits to when it when it's completed. And then the uh, last thing I wanted to say is, I guess one of the, my concerns is money that was, buildings that were held for academic use that you didn't pay taxes on that now become commercial use. And all that time that was sort of banked, for, le for lack of a better way of saying it, we did not benefit from that revenue. I feel like we should be sending a bill for that. Um, and so that needs to be somehow resolved for me. But uh, so those are just a few. And uh, Steve's been very good. He's you sat down and talked about it. So this is not uh, any news. Um, but uh, again, some things are certainly non-negotiables. I am concerned. Um, I always say it was the last thing. It's not quite the last thing, but I'm getting to the last thing. Uh, one of the things you, you talk about is the gateway of the hub, which talks about, you know, here's where the campus of MIT be, begins. And, and I don't look at it this way. I look at MIT's in Cambridge, not Cambridge's in MIT. And, and so somehow you have to realize that in a better way, present it better. And I think I heard something about retail diversity. We have models. Uh, Community development has models. When we talked about retail diversity, that talks about retail that is affordable. We talked about the affordable housing aspect, which I would love to see more of, and I don't know if I want to go to the clouds to get it, but I, I do want to see more affordable affordability, but I also want to see uh, economic diversity. And I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe that you get this. I don't believe it's going to happen. And so I need some sort of proposal in writing that speaks to that. So, I mean, I, I don't know if Charles is a good example because I know there's been some ups and downs about that. But if you look at um, the building, church corner apartments, how that first started, where it was only five retail, retail spaces, but there was real work to make sure that it was community based, local, affordable, retail moved into that space. And I don't hear that from, from you. So you guys get the big bucks to make it happen. So I want to see it happen. Well, thank you. Council, I just want to be, um, thank you, first of all, for your candor. You've been very frank with me from the very beginning, and you've set up some challenges here, and I think we're taking them extremely seriously. And uh, we've had the opportunity to talk about a number of these issues internally at MIT at the highest levels, and, uh, uh, you know, I, we will be working over time on every one of these issues. I think that, uh, you know, the job training is important. We made some comments on even the construction side, the apprenticeship programs we want to be tying in and figuring out ways to make that happen. It's certainly the Cherry Street lot. Loud and clear, we're looking at ways to, to uh, try to facilitate some uh, mutually acceptable solution and all that. The open space and the inviting nature of it, being participating, I think that's been really, really important. Last night was at an event where Community Arts Center was uh, hosting uh, an element uh, over at Voltage, and we had some of the young students that were doing community art. Our, our focus here on some of this retail is to make sure that we're programming this. I think the number of uh, councils has been very active in pushing this. We want this to be a place where people feel welcome. And I think the community arts was a piece of that, the programming is a piece of that. And that may take, many of our places are open, but people don't feel invited and we've had that conversation. So I'm walking around trying to figure out how we're gonna make that more inviting so people feel like they can step into the space and it's partly theirs and they can enjoy the amenities that we're creating. We had, a, we had an interesting time last night. It was a very diverse time in terms of you know young kids coming in and explaining things and tech people from, uh, from around the Kennel Square area. And I see something that, that's worth celebrating. And, and I think trying to get that in and activating that in a variety of places that we're talking about is a challenge or something. I have to prove to you somehow we're going to do that. It may be requiring us to we'll, we'll figure out some other ways to make sure that we're stepping up our programming pieces. Um, 